Hi, everybody. We are live. And uh, I'm just going to get this screen adjusted a little bit. There we go. I like that better. This shirt is vibrantly pink on this stream. <laughs> I didn't pick this shirt out. Uh, Yolanda threw it down the stairs at me, and so I put it on. Um, but nonetheless, we will uh, endure. Yeah, thanks, Nate. Nate says I'm cute in pink. Uh, <laughs> yeah, real men wear pink. I think there's some sort of like breast cancer awareness. Is that a pink thing? I don't know. Um, what's up, Trevor? So we've got a fun one tonight, guys. Um, I love talking about tasting notes, you know, of all the different uh, qualities that you can pull out on the nose or on the palate with bourbon, whiskey, um, even other spirits as well, to be honest. But uh, bourbon and whiskey in particular have baking spices is a really common note. And <clears throat> I've seen a lot of reviews. I've seen a lot of videos where people talk about baking spices and they don't really give you very much information. They kind of half-ass it, frankly. And I, you know, when I see somebody write a review or give a video review and they say, oh, this has baking spice on the nose. I always go, what, which one? There's a lot of baking spices. Baking spice is not a thing. There are spices be more specific. Uh, and, you know, I've been perfectly guilty of, of saying baking spice on the nose as well. I mean, that's a note I know I have given. I know for a fact I've given that note. Um, and usually it's just either laziness uh, or it's it's sort of like I can't figure out what the baking spice is. I know there's baking spice in this. I don't know which one it is. So today I've got a fun thing set up here. <laughs> Mike says, feels right I join and Nate is busting Kyle's balls. That is kind of what Nate always does. So, it, yeah, that's how you know things are right with the world for sure. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, so I wanted to do a video where I actually sat down and said, okay, you want to know what the baking spice is? Let's find out. Let's do side-by-sides. And today I've got a lineup here of different baking spices in jars. Not all of them are in jars. Some of them are, uh, you can kind of see, I was gonna, I thought this was off camera more than it is. The mint is, is present. So uh, um, definitely gonna have some fresh herbs. But uh, yeah, I, I, you know, Trevor said he's never seen anybody do this before. That's, that's, I've never seen it either, which is exactly why, why I decided to do this. And I will tell you, this is not the first, this is the first one, but it's not the only one. I'm gonna do a series of these. Um, where I bring different uh, real world items and then do comparisons to the notes people say they've gotten from whiskeys. Now, I am not great at keeping track of my own notes. Uh, <laughs> I make these videos and I can go back and watch these videos, but I don't usually watch all of them um, except when I'm editing. After I'm done editing, I don't really rewatch my own videos. Uh, so, I don't keep track of my notes very well. Um, the only notes I do keep track of are the ones on the Patreon. I've got the series of um, Stag Junior reviews that I'm doing, batch one through batch 14. Those I've been writing down in the notebook, which you've seen if you've been on the Patreon. If you're not a member of the Patreon, consider joining. A lot of cool content. Like I said, every week I'm doing a review of a different Stag Junior batch up there. And we will compare those side by side to the extravaganza one through 14 all at once that I did in a previous live stream. But yeah, I mean, I've never seen anybody do this before. I've never seen a whiskey tuber of any kind or whiskey influencer of any kind, blogger, uh, Instagram, YouTube, own website, you name it. Never seen any of them actually say, oh, does this smell like cinnamon? Here's cinnamon. Let's see if it actually smells like cinnamon. And I don't know why they haven't done it. Maybe we're going to find out together tonight why they haven't done it. Because there might be, yeah, I'm setting a new standard or, or something like that. We might find out together that these night notes are all bullshit. Um, <laughs> and if they are, uh, it's going to really change how I treat my video content. <laughs> uh, but I suspect more than likely we're going to find that some of the notes people give are uh, 
you know, informed by their own experiences in a way that, you know, people who like cinnamon more are going to find it more frequently. Um, I know I've got a bias towards finding nutmeg because I really enjoy nutmeg. Same with ginger. But uh, we're going we're gonna to walk, walk through all these. And like I said, uh, this isn't the only one of these videos that will come out. Uh, I am doing this one based on the baking spices, which I'm kind of taking pretty liberally because I have some mint here. I have some, uh, some cocoa powder here. Those aren't really baking spices per se, but it's hard to figure out where to categorize things. And I'm going to do a series of these videos. I think the next one after this will probably be um, sweet aromatics. Your brown sugars, your honeys, your molasses, uh, caramel, butterscotch. And there will be sweet cocoa, which I'll get to that in a minute. Why I'm going to do a sweet cocoa after already doing this sort of baking chocolate in the baking spices category. But I think it's important to talk about them separately. But I've got a whole bunch of whiskey, kind of a ridiculous amount of whiskey on this table, if I'm being quite honest. Yeah, a lot of bottles of whiskey. <laughs> um, but part of why I'm doing this is if you want to find a whiskey with a particular tasting note, um, sometimes it's hard to find. You know, if I type into Google whiskey with cinnamon, I'm going to get ads for Fireball, not whiskey with cinnamon tasting notes. Um, I know because I tried, <laughs> but I will say that if you reverse engineer it and you go on the internet and you say, all right, pick a whiskey, Weller Antique 107, type it in, see what people reviewed it as, see what people say is in it. The Weller Antique 107, which I've got here, right there, has a lot of baking spice notes from professional reviewers. And I've written down the notes and the uh, reviewers who gave them in this little handy dandy notebook. We'll see if I agree or not when I compare them side by side with the actual spices themselves. <laughs> now, <clears throat> to get this thing started, let me see here. I think the first thing I'm going to pour myself is... This Knob Creek twice barreled rye. And, uh, you know, I'll kind of explain a little bit more about what I'm doing while I'm taking a couple sips just to get my wet my whistle a little bit. Man, this cork is really in there. There we go. Um, I'll explain what I'm doing while I wet my whistle a little bit. Uh, yeah, Michael says he thinks some of these claims are pretty exaggerated. That could definitely be true. It's always hard to tell. It's hard to tell what people um, actually pick up and what they think they pick up. But come on, man, this is a tight cork. I, Knob Creek is sort of notorious for tight corks, but this one is particularly tight. So part of why I'm starting with the Knob Creek twice barreled rye, which uh, got these for a stupid good deal. Uh, I think there's like 40 or 50 bucks retail. And um, for some strange reason, Big Red Liquor's put them on sale a while back for like $17 a bottle. I think I bought three. I should have bought like two cases. I bought three because I was like, that's a really good price. I can get rid of these for less than retail and still pay what I more than what I paid. Um, and I didn't know if I liked it or not, but I tried it. I really liked it actually. Um, <clears throat> and that very well may have something to do with the fact that there's a lot of baking spice in it. A lot of the reviewers who reviewed the Knob Creek twice barreled rye <clears throat> excuse me, gave it uh, baking spice notes. I actually picked three different ones. Um, go bourbon, whiskey jug, and breaking bourbon. Now, I only relied on bloggers for this exercise. Uh, I could have gone through whiskey tubers, um, but I decided not to only because most of them don't have their tasting notes consolidated into one location that I can go read. Um, I love watching whiskey tube videos, but it's difficult to keep the tasting notes straight. Uh, you have to kind of go into the videos and I haven't seen very many that include the tasting notes in the uh, comment area or in the uh, subtitle area. I don't even know what you call it. Description. The description. Thank you, Yolanda. Um, I haven't seen many whiskey tubers include tasting notes in the description of their videos. So the easiest way is just type it into Google to see what shows up and, and, you know, search engine optimization correctly as you would expect it to, you know, 
prioritizes the more popular, more well-known uh, bloggers. So there are a couple of wild cards in here, but generally it's going to be people you've heard. Trevor says he's got one guy from Breaking Bourbon that has a palette that he agrees with, but he doesn't get many of the notes. <clears throat> now, I didn't write down their full reviews. The only things I wrote down in my handy dandy notebook were the. <laughs> Yolanda from upstairs. Who are you, Blues Clues? Yeah. Yes, I am. Ba -ba -ba. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure that's. I'm sure that's proprietary, so don't sue me, Nickelodeon or whomever. But uh, the Handy Dandy Notebook only includes the baking spice notes from these whiskey reviews, not any other notes, because I don't care about those right now. Right now I'm doing baking spice. But Knob Creek, twice barreled rye. If you check their notes, I've got a lot of basic uh, baking spice notes, or, or what I'm calling baking spice notes. Um, I've got cinnamon, nutmeg, cherry licorice, cocoa, and white powder, white pepper, not white powder. That's a different thing you can smell. Um, no. <laughs> so, so yeah, so three different whiskey reviewers gave it a lot of different notes. Uh, but, uh, Nate's writing in paragraphs now in the live chat. I can't read all that shit. Um, my eyes are too bad and you're too far away. I don't have a nice big fancy setup yet. I'm still pretty small time. We'll get there. But let's let's uh, let's go ahead and dig into the, some of these some of these notes. Let's pick one of the uh, one of the categories. I want to save cinnamon because it's so common. That's such an obvious note. So we'll wait on cinnamon. <clears throat> let's do uh, let's do chocolate. I think chocolate's a fun note. Baker's chocolate is what I'm going with here because the chocolatey note actually could come from a lot of different places on the palate. So there's chocolate malting, which is unlike what some may tell you. There are a lot of people that misunderstand this process. Chocolate malting is actually a, uh, a darker than average malted barley. Much like if you hear people talk about a honey malted barley, it's actually a lighter than average malted barley. It's not adding chocolate to the malting process or adding honey. No, no, no. It's about the color essentially of the product after, after it's been malted. So uh, Baker's chocolate, Hershey's cocoa, 100% cacao, unsweetened. Definitely smells like chocolate. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, and one of the interesting things Trevor points out, yeah, the Woodford uh, chocolate malted rye, and uh, Nate pointed out 1910. I've got the 1910 here as well. But what was interesting to me is that I didn't see any reviewers put chocolate as a note on the 1910, and that was always was my instinct as well. Was there's chocolate in here? So even though no one's put it on the list, after I try to pull chocolate out of the Knob Creek Twice Barreled Rye, I'm going to pour a glass of the 1910 and see if I can't find that. But, uh, but yeah, you know, chocolate, to me, this is, you know, this 100% cacao, it's naturally unsweetened. This is not going to taste good. But it smells fantastic. This smells exactly like you'd expect, like, a chocolate bar to smell. And that's one of the interesting things. When you're doing nosing notes versus tasting notes, chocolate tastes different than it smells. It really does. Um, because when you think about the chocolate taste, what you're usually thinking about is the combination of chocolate and sugar. And this kind of goes back to where I was heading before and kind of got diverted in my own ADHD brain. Chocolate will come from the malting process of your barley or rye, um, but it can also come from the barrel. And when you're getting chocolate notes out of the barrel, it's typically going to be a sweetened chocolate. It's going to be a milk chocolate, sweet aromatic. Um, that's where you go to your double oaked whiskeys. The double oaked whiskeys are going to have more of a sweet chocolate um, as opposed to that, I would almost say, grainy chocolate or like bitter baker's chocolate. Um, 
So it depends. I will say the twice barreled rye, you know, this is going to be a double barreled process. So you would expect to get that, so that sweeter chocolate note. And really when you put them side by side, I mean, I can smell it. The rye, because I'm doing them literally next to each other, the rye really stands out on the twice barreled rye, as it should. But you can definitely tell the chocolate influence. That sweetness on this twice barreled rye is very much a chocolate sweetness. Like I was saying, when it comes from the barrel, I tend to get a sweeter chocolate. Now this isn't the sweeter chocolate, but because we're talking about the nose, to me, they're gonna be very similar. There's a dryness. There's a dryness to chocolate as well that, uh, it's like a dry, nutty sweetness. And you know, the twice barreled rye here, the rye I think highlights, you get this sort of sweetness from this honey and the rye and then this sort of dry chocolate note. But it doesn't show up for me much in the taste. You get that woody note, which I mean, I guess that sort of dry, oaky, it's dry and sweet at the same time, which is weird and a little confusing. I suppose that sort of dry, sweet combination could be read as um, red as like a sweetened chocolate. Interesting. Let's go ahead and try the 1910 Old Forester. We'll put this one here next to the chocolate as well and see what happens. Oh, man. So let me know in the chat how y'all's week has gone or how you expect your next week to go. I'm sure people are getting ready for the holidays, debating whether or not they're going to go um, visit relatives or not. It's a weird time for all of this, uh, but we'll make do. We'll make it work. Now, comparing these two is really interesting. Obviously, the rye shows up really hard on the twice barrel dry. But I'm trying to remember what gives the 1910 its sort of chocolatey note. It's definitely finished. Uh, it's got some sort of special finishing. But I'm not sure exactly what they're doing to it. The proof is also rather close. It's 93% versus 100%. 100 proof. 93 proof versus 100 proof. Yeah, Michael's been running around the road. It'll be good to be home, my man. And you might have something fun waiting for you. You should have something fun waiting for you, in fact. It's beautiful. You know, the twice barreled rye, at first I was like, yeah, this is quite chocolatey actually, more chocolatey than I anticipated. But it's chocolatey, it's honey, and it's definitely rye. The grain shows up because of that rye. On the Old Forester 1910, you get classic Brown Foreman, Old Forester, banana bread vibes. Get out of here, fly. But you also get unmistakable sweet chocolate cherries. Like it smells like chocolate covered cherries to me. Now here's what's really interesting. Side by siding it, I actually get more cocoa relationship with the twice barreled rye. The, uh, the twice barreled rye to me smells more like sniffing this container of, of chocolate powder than this one. And when I do them side by side, yeah, when I do them side by side, that baking, um, the, 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 
something weird is happening upstairs. Alright, I'll do them side by side. Yeah, when I do them side by side, the cherry, the fruity sweetness really jumps out of this 1910. You definitely can tell there's a chocolatey note, but I get lots of cherries. I get lots of banana. I get this like black strap molasses and butterscotch. All the sweet aromatics come out hard. And the chocolate, or what my brain was telling me was chocolate in the 1910, gets lost. Whereas if I take this twice barreled rye and just smell it, it smells like rye. But if I smell it next to the chocolate, I feel like it becomes more chocolatey. And maybe that's not the right test, <laughs> but I feel like it's, it, you know, the identifying similarities is really interesting. My glass, do you think it is drawing the sweet smells out and doing away with the other elements? I absolutely do. Yeah, I think what you've got going on in the 1910 is sort of a, <clears throat> if you think about like, like sound waves, if you, if you like sound waves graph like that. And so if you have two different parts that go up at the same point at the same frequency, right? It'll multiply and be louder. But if you have, one point that goes up and another point that goes down at the same frequency, they can cancel each other out. I'm almost having that kind of experience with this. It's like the chocolatiness is very, it's like exactly the same on the twice barreled rye, even though it might be quieter than the 1910. So when I put them together, no, I'm, I said that backwards. I'm sorry. The, cho the chocolate note is slightly different on the twice barreled rye, just slightly different than like actual real chocolate. And so putting them together, brings the chocolate note out of the twice barreled rye. Whereas it might be identical. It might just be precisely uh, uh, this sort of Baker's chocolate on the 1910, which means when I smell them at the same time, this kind of cancels out. It numbs my palate to that type of note. Whereas with the rye, I become more sensitive to it because I'm looking for it. And so it heightens the experience. Very cool. I did not expect to have that kind of a result. But now that I've done that, I can't stop smelling just straight up banana bread in this 1910. No one's going to want to bake with this chocolate again after I've shoved my nose in it so many times. Good things are. I definitely could. You know what? Um, what the hell? We don't have a, a huge audience today, and that's not a big deal. But uh, because of that, I'm going to be a little bit more freewheeling with how we do this. I really like Michael's idea of doing a sweet and the rough spice back to back. I'm going to grab a banana because I think we've got one left. I think. Maybe. Maybe. Let me check. Let me check real quick. If we do it, the very last one. Nope, I ate it. Oh, much for that. And I'm back. So I don't have any cherries, but I've got an orange. Um, I don't think so. So if I just express a little bit of the orange, let's see what that does with the sweetness in the 1910. Ooh, oh, that's good. I like that shit. Oh, man. Okay. We're learning now. We're learning now. Now, when I go back to this, it smells like chocolate-covered oranges. So it brought the chocolate out. I think that's exactly what we were kind of talking about, anticipating the, the having something that's near it, um, that's similar. You know, the, the, the citrus notes in this and the fruit notes in this kind of get quiet down a little bit. But it, it enhances some of them. It enhances certain elements. So it smells a lot less like banana bread and more just like chocolate-covered. Before, without any prompting, it was chocolate-covered cherries and banana bread. Um, <laughs> Nate said, this is the nerdiest live stream ever. I'm here for it. Good. I'm here for it, too. This is great. I love this. 
Yeah. So without any prompt in the 1910 was banana bread, chocolate covered cherries. With the chocolate prompting, it became straight banana bread, um, maybe a little bit fruitier. With the orange prompting, it becomes, yeah, it becomes chocolate covered oranges. Ooh, and the cinnamon pops out. The cinnamon pops out that is definitely part of that banana bread. Um, that's super cool. Okay. I haven't even tasted this yet. Let me taste it. Oh, guys, I got to tell you, I really like 1910. <clears throat> we do have almond extract. Hey, Yolanda, when you're in. All right. The wonderful, beautiful, um, exquisite partner, Yolanda, is grab grabbing the uh, cherries and almond extract as we speak. Nate said, thanks, boo. <laughs> You're welcome. Because taste is scent-based, did it change your taste at all? Good question, Michael. Um, I don't know. My experience with this 1910 right now is just fantastic. It's just beautiful. I think it, I think it must have. What if I do like this? <laughs> that made it worse man I get the flies going on in here okay what am I doing okay yeah now we're gonna smell the chocolate and drink the orange didn't work yeah that's the ticket that makes it super duper chocolatey. Interesting. I actually, I do think the 1910 is more chocolatey on the palate, whereas the twice barreled rye is more chocolatey on the nose. Going back to it now. Oh, man. Yeah. The chocolate really pops. Um, I get chocolate and a little bit of citrus. What happens if I put that as orange next to this uh, twice barreled right here? So this feels empty. Well, so it should, should still smell. We got almonds. Because of almond extract and then the cherries. And then I'm coming with chocolate chips. Okay. That are semi dark because I suspect you're going to get a different smell from them. Okay. And the cocoa pot. Cool. Yeah, the orange brings out the rye in the twice barreled rye. Um, it kind of kills off everything else, to be honest. Not not a great pairing. <clears throat> but yeah, what we're we gonna do with these cherries? Ooh. Ooh, those are really close. Good call, Nate. Interesting. Okay, almond extract. Hey, where are all of our ingredients? I got them out here. Oh. Yeah, no. The 1910 does not get better when you smell uh, almond extract or cherries, I don't think. It just kind of uh, it kind of dulls everything down, and it like it makes it a lot less interesting. The chocolate doesn't get enhanced. The sweetness gets quieter. The the fruit gets quieter. It just kind of dulls it down. Nate says that chocolate covered cherry isn't a real note. Maybe. So those are semi sweet chocolate chips. No, they smell almost identical. Ah! Yeah, I mean, they smell almost identical. Okay, can I have cherry Yep. I'm going to eat them. There you go. Are you done with my chip? Yep. All right. Um, is the chocolate-covered cherry note a real note? I don't know, Nate. Depends on what you mean by real. 
I mean, I think it's certainly a real note. Um, I keep going back to it. I keep finding it. <clears throat> it's one of those things, though, where, like, yeah, I definitely get chocolate-covered cherry in the 1910. No doubt about that. I get banana bread and chocolate-covered cherry. And then when I put the chocolate up to my nose with it, I got what? I got the banana bread super strong, so the chocolate was kind of quieted. Um, but I put the orange next to my nose, chocolate got louder, the fruit got quieted. So I think if there's any statement you can make about the chocolate-covered cherry note, is that the chocolate-covered cherry note is being um, affected directly by what I'm putting up next to it. If I put up chocolate, then the chocolate gets quieter because it can't compete with the pure chocolate. If I put up a fruit note, then the fruit gets quieter because it can't compete um, with the pure fruit. The 1910 can't. However, the, the twice-barreled rye, the Knob Creek, the chocolate got stronger when I put the chocolate next to it. So if there's any claim we could make, it's that the chocolate note on the Knob Creek might not be a quote unquote real chocolate note um, because it's my brain is interpreting it as chocolate, but when I compare it to real chocolate, then it brings it out more, which is not what I would expect. I would expect it to be less, um, less prominent because the pure thing would desensitize me to it. <laughs> you know, that's a great question, Mike, and uh, we can try experimenting with that because guess what else I've got? We'll go ahead and jump to that now because I have exhausted myself with this chocolate. So let's go ahead and move into pepper. Now, I've got black pepper, but I've also got white pepper. One of the reasons I did this is because white pepper is a note that is often used in a pretentious way. People are always like, ah, white pepper is not a real thing or, you know, that sounds really pretentious or whatever. Reality is black peppercorns and white peppercorns are from the same plant and both of them are green when they first start out. They're the same thing. Black peppercorns are sun dried. Typically they're aged and dried with a shell on, whereas white peppercorns are usually dried and either have the shell removed or they have the shell removed prior to the drying process. So essentially a white peppercorn is very, very similar to a black peppercorn, except they're missing a component. So think about it in that term. It's a, redu it's, a, it's a reductive modification instead of an additive one. They're not changing anything. They're taking something away. And that will highlight different flavors and highlight different scents in the peppercorns that are black versus white. So I'm going to go ahead, grind myself up a little bit of black pepper. Then, wow, that's very fragrant, very fragrant. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and grind up next to it a little bit of white pepper. Oh man, this is not as good of a grinder. There you go, you can see white peppercorn, black peppercorn. Now, <clears throat> finding white pepper was a little bit difficult, but ironically, the only two pours that I have in front of me that included black pepper and white pepper are the ones I looked up are the pours that are already listed and I've already put on the table, the Knob Creek Twice Barreled Rye and the Old Forester 1910. Now, real quick, I want to backtrack for a second because... Part of this whole process was I wanted to give the notes and give the people who gave the notes because I'm sort of saying, do I agree or disagree with those characterizations? Uh, so on the 1910, the, um, the 1910, it was just us. We just assumed that it was going to be chocolatey. Um, but the chocolate note on the, the Kansas City – I'm not Kansas City. <laughs> the Knob Creek Rye, I just wrote down KC – my brain said Kansas City. The chocolatey note on the Kansas... The chocolatey note on the Knob Creek Rye was given by um, Whiskey Jug. Whiskey Jug said cherry, licorice, and cocoa. Hmm. 
Nate said, would you agree Pepper typically shows in the finish? Yes, I would. However, I do think that you can get Pepper on the nose, so we're going to taste and smell and just put it through the ringer here. Anyway, the white pepper note on the, the Knob Creek twice-barreled rye didn't come from Whiskey Jug. It came instead from Breaking Bourbon. Um, they found the white pepper note on the Knob Creek rye. The 1910 black pepper note was given by also by breaking bourbon. And they specifically said black pepper on the finish. Um, I tell you what, the differences are very minor between these two. And this is definitely going to make me sneeze. I just poured pepper on my forehead. Okay, good. Good start. I mean, the black pepper to my nose, has like a baked quality. Uh-oh. Oh. That, this is a dangerous game I'm playing here. Okay, let me move to uh, something that might funnel it a little better. Oh, that went right into my nose. Holy crap. Oh. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. So the black pepper, you get this sort of, I mean, I, I, I hate to feel like I primed myself by explaining the difference between the two. <laughs> Knew that was coming. Knew that was coming. I hate to feel like I primed myself because I explained the difference between the two as black pepper being like sun baked and the white pepper having the shell taken off. But that really is the difference on the nose. The black pepper has this sort of like almost, almost clove like sharpness this baked sharpness whereas the white pepper is a lot more earthy um oh oh man it's way up there guys it's way up at my sinuses oh Oh, I may have to like go full neti pot with this. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. <coughs> I knew this was a risk. <coughs> I did pepper way too early. <coughs> oh, uh oh. <coughs> okay, okay. All right, let's get it together. Let's get it together. God. All right. <coughs> okay. So white pepper, <laughs> white pepper and black pepper. Oh man, going from the pepper back to the nose in this twice barreled right, super chocolatey. Okay. Um, <sighs> man, tickles the back of my throat still. So the white pepper note, I don't have written down where it was in the process, but let's see if I can find it. Definitely not there on the nose. Let's taste it. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry for all the coffee. Oh. You know what? I actually do kind of get it on the finish. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think the Eleanor, um, Michael, that you're referring to is, uh, I thought that was sourced MGP juice, <clears throat> but I can't remember for sure. Yeah, the pepper really shows up on the finish of this. Uh, but I do kind of feel like they called it white pepper. Um, I feel like they called it white pepper because it was just mild pepper. I'm not sure that it's actually like meaningfully different than the black pepper. Um, <clears throat> let's try the Old Forester 1910, which had the black pepper on the finish specifically <clears throat> from Breaking Bourbon, and we'll see. We'll see if that how it compares.
Yeah, I think that the um, I think that there's a like tingly component, <laughs> for lack of a better word, on the 1910. That's being ascribed to Black Pepper. Whereas the Knob Creek Twice Barreled Rye has a pepper flavor, but not a tingle. And so that's being ascribed as a uh, white pepper. <clears throat> they are different. Um, and the difference is not purely about uh, flavor. But... Yeah, I mean, the white pepper. Yeah, the flavor is very meaningfully different. And and I don't honestly think that this is white pepper in the Knob Creek Twice Barreled Rye. Um, it's it's like a mild black pepper. I'm trying to think of anything that actually tastes like that, that white pepper, um, now that I've actually tasted the pepper and didn't just smell it. The smell was basically black pepper without this sort of baked... Um, oven toasted quality but the flavor is way different it's uh sweeter sharper in a very specific kind of way it's not like burning and popping on the tongue which is where i usually find pepper on finishes now the white pepper is um hmm the white pepper is much, it, it's almost like uh, like a hot pepper or like Szechuan peppercorns. If you've ever had those, they have a numbing effect. Um, the white pepper is a lot more in your face in terms of the flavor, but it's a narrower flavor set. So I'm going to kill one of these bugs before this end of this stream. I'm going to do it. Mm. Anyway. <clears throat> so don't make the mistake that I think Breaking Bourbon may have just made. Not here to, you know, throw stones at giants, but maybe I am a little. I think it's a mistake to think that the quieter pepper flavor is white pepper. It's not. They are different flavor profiles. If you have a pepper that doesn't tingle as much on the palate, but is a lot more uh, uh, um, dominating, it's a lot more prominent without the tingle, so it's pepper flavor without feeling like pepper, to me, that's probably going to be more of a white pepper vibe, uh, just based on tasting both of them and tasting these pours. All right, let's move on. <clears throat> I can't, I can't do any more pepper. It's, it's, it's really having a hell of an effect on me right now. So we got the peppers, we got the chocolates. Let's go ahead and mix it up a little, shall we? Let's do uh, allspice. I think allspice is fun because what the hell is allspice? And, uh, Michael, you definitely should put pepper next to the OGD 114. Um, <coughs> man, I hope that I hope that clears out. I've got pepper in my throat. Nate said, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof A120. I get either intense cinnamon or pepper. Sipping on that now. Uh, I might have to grab that here in a bit, Nate. Remind me, and I'll when I get to the cinnamon, remind me, and I'll go grab it. We'll find out. Um, but for now, let's talk about allspice. Allspice is dried ground unripe berries of the pimenta dioica tree. Hmm. You learned something, didn't you, fuckers? Here is what is really worth keeping in mind about that allspice. One of these is more expensive than the other because one of them tells you that it's Jamaican allspice. Ooh. A lot of allspice comes from Jamaica. Um, there are a lot of islands that make these kinds of spices that grow these kinds of plants, these trees. And uh, so close. So don't let the marketing fool you like it clearly fooled me. They smell almost exactly the same. Allspice really, to me, is an interesting, hard to describe note. It's a sweeter spice, so you're definitely in that realm of baking spices for dessert, but it, it's, um, it's kind of like it's cinnamon, nutmeg, and clove all had a baby. Uh, 
And uh, I don't know. They don't know who the dad is. Okay. Okay. Let's fight. There's there's all spice all over the place. Let's see. Let's see what the hell has all spice in it. All right. I've got a couple of different pours with allspice. Your good old friend OF1910 is going to get a refill because it's one of the three where allspice was listed as a note. But there are two more. And these two you have not yet seen on the stream. Number one, Jefferson's. That is a loose cork. Oh, my goodness. I may have to revisit that. Jefferson's Ocean. <laughs> this is a sweet baking show. No joke, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, who needs that much allspice? Well, you know, when Yolanda and I moved in together, I think we both had an allspice. And uh, that just sort of ended up being the way it went. Uh, <laughs> this is a sweet baking show. Thanks, Steve Brown. <laughs> okay, this is the Jefferson's Ocean Aged at Sea Cast Strength Voyage 14. <laughs> I specify Voyage 14 because I wanted very specific tasting notes, and this is a great way to get it. <clears throat> people have tasted this. People gave notes on this, and they're not going to vary a whole lot from bottle to bottle, unlike something that's a bigger – and I got to get a different cork in that. That's, that's unacceptably loose. Okay. Make your jokes at home. Okay. Uh, let's go in with this. Voyage 14. I promised you one more for the allspice. What the hell was it? I don't even remember what it was. <laughs> now Yolanda, Yolanda caught my sneezes. Noah's Mill. Not one of my favorite bourbons. Um, I do like the big punt on the bottom, though. I could saber this thing. Okay. So I do like the bottle color. I'll give them that. That's pretty nifty. Now, <clears throat> the allspice note in the Noah's Mill was given by what is that? Whiskey wash. Hard to read my own handwriting. Saber it live, Nate says. You buy me a saber, Nate, and I'll try. Um, Whiskey Wash gave the note on Noah's Mill of Allspice. Uh, the note of Allspice on the 1910 was given by Breaking Bourbon, our friends over at Breaking Bourbon, who also gave the black pepper finish. Um, and then finally, the Jefferson's Ocean 14 Allspice note was from a Reddit reviewer named... Smoked underscore herring. Reliable sources. So, let's fucking do it. I've got this allspice here. And since we got two of them, I'm not too worried about putting my nose on the thing. Oh, I do not like that. I do not like Noah's Mill. <laughs> They mixed four-year and 20-year bourbons, and I deeply regret the fact that they used any four-year in this. The 20-year should have just been all that they used. <clears throat> so. No, I don't get it at all. Not on the nose, anyway. There's definitely baking spices. But they're not they're not all spice. I think all spices is, is way overused, frankly, as a note. Um, because it's such a unique uh, blend of of qualities. I mean, to me, I get sharp ethanol caramel. Maybe a touch of cinnamon, maybe. I just, I don't... Allspice is the wrong note. There's something that's that's like cloves and pepper combined in allspice that is not 
Um, that's not part of that note. Nate, you bring up a great point. Nate says, it's kind of a catch-all note, referring to Allspice. And I think he's totally right, and I think that's a big problem. I think people assume Allspice means all of the spices. It doesn't. Allspice is a very specific tree that I named badly. <clears throat> so stop giving all spices a note if it doesn't smell like that shit right there. What has happened to this? That is such a weird transition from that Noah's Mill. Holy garbage. What? This... This makes the Noah's Mill smell good, and the Noah's Mill makes this smell sour. Not cool. Okay. Now, this is a lot more allspice-esque. I get a lot more allspice in this Jefferson's Ocean. Let me just... Uh... Yeah. There's this nice, dark, herbal quality. Oh, that that is that's a great note. Who who gave that note? That's that herring guy, smoked herring. How about you, man? Well done you. That's a great note. So the Jefferson's Ocean, uh, this is Voyage 14. One, four. One, four. Uh, really does have an allspice on the nose. It's like a little bit of metallic. Uh... <laughs> yeah, who needs me when you got smoked underscore herring? That's right, Nate. It's got sort of this metallic grains and then honey and uh, uh, metallic grains, honey, uh, candy corn, white sugar, and then everything else is allspice. That is so cool. I did not actually expect to find allspice in any of these. I'll be honest with you. Let's taste this. Let's taste this. It's just in the nose. It's just in the nose. It's not in the taste. Yolanda asked, for timing purposes, how many spices do I have left? Six. How many have done? Three. Okay. okay. Um, well, we got kind of sidetracked on the first one. There was a slow start tonight. I don't think Nate will mind if he watches me eat for the fourth consecutive week. Well, but what do you want? <laughs> All right. <sighs> yeah, I do not like Noah's Mill. I agree with you, Trevor. It's it's just the young the young four year distillates takes way too much of a front seat. <laughs> Nate said, "God, please eat." <laughs> The, the four year takes way too much of a front seat. It's way too metallic and grainy. It just tastes like new make that you mixed good bourbon with by mistake. Um, what was the other one for the, for the? What am I doing? Allspice 1910. Let's see if it is in there or not. Not yet. I have not yet fully been trained. On what? Dinner on screen. No. Okay, 
Nate said, I need it to be something else to totally mess with your taste buds. Maybe garlic bread and fettuccine Alfredo. <laughs> Trevor says, Corn Daddy is eating some popcorn. <laughs> oh, man. It's a, good, it's a good night, I can already tell. I will say, I get it. So that, that low, sweet rich deep note that you get on the 1910 it reminds you of the chocolate and maybe even like maybe even like a butterscotch it's sweet it's dark it's rich that sweet dark richness does come through on the allspice i think what's missing is the sharpness that clove like sharpness and i have cloves here um There's there's this there's this sort of sharp aggressive note. It's hard for me to articulate, but cloves have it, allspice has it, the nineteen ten doesn't have it. But it has that dark sweet richness, which is I think part of what was missing in the Noah's Mill. The Noah's Mill has a sharpness, but it's not the same kind of sharpness to my nose. It's a grainy sharpness. It's not an earthy sharpness. It's not an herbal sharpness. It's grain. It's very clearly grain. And so because it doesn't have that sweetness, it just has that sharpness of grain. I don't, I can't compare it. But I think there is some. Let's taste it. What the hell? Nothing like eating raw herbs. I may have discovered something. I have discovered something. Wow. Um, wow. If you want to jazz up your Old Forester 1910, put a pinch of allspice in it and mix it up. That is the dumbest, coolest thing I've discovered in a long time. Because I really get... Um, I didn't get... I mean, allspice was super prominent in the uh, Jefferson Ocean Age cast strength voyage 14. It even kind of shows up in the palate a little bit. But boy, if you... Oh, that 1910, it's sort of... You can see it. But boy, if you add the allspice to it, wow, that's good. Wow, that's good. It is freaking dessert. Oh, like double dessert. It was already dessert. Oh, I'm going to do that again for sure. I may have to make like a... Uh, make like an old... fat, Like a uh, allspice old-fashioned. Fuck, that's going to come. That's, that's, a, that's a new recipe I'm going to make. Wow. Y'all don't believe me. Try it at home, man. Seriously. Like, like I'm talking a pinch. A pinch. Like this much. Not much. Put that in your uh, in your 1910. Ooh, okay. <laughs> and bake at 375. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Uh, uh <laughs> Nate, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll exchange. We can trade. I'll give you some allspice. Nate, if you send me that Michter's 10-year rye, I can send you some allspice. By the way, gang, we got a cool, cool December coming up soon. Uh, I got a lot of fun videos. I'm doing a whole series of Michter's videos culminating with a really freaking cool Christmas Day sample video. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And also, the store is coming very soon. Drink Pro merch will be out there. It's not just going to be Drink Pro across the chest, although we will definitely have that piece of merch. We will have other things that are a little bit more interesting aesthetically that you can wear anywhere. I want you to wear it to your business meetings. I want you to wear it while you're working. I want you to wear it while you're driving. I want Drink Pro merch for every circumstance that you exist in. I may make a Drink Pro nightgown just for kicks. I got streetwear. I got it. Let's go ahead and try our next spice. Where should we go from there? That was a fun one. Let's go a different direction. Let's talk about anise. Now, when I say anise, 
you probably think of Star Anise or Star Anise or whatever. Nate, you might be surprised. I'm going to have some Drink Pro merch that you could definitely wear to a business meeting. Um, uh, <laughs> I love that Trevor asked about the Drink Pro flannel. Um, the the quarterly item for the first quarter of my, my Patreon account, and this goes for Michael and Trevor. I think they might be the only ones who are getting this very special item. We've got... Drink Pro logo tee in flannel. It's very cool. I've got a copy of one coming to my house soon. I wanted to run a test pattern before I send it out to you guys, but I think we've got some uh, some Drink Pro merch that that uh, <laughs> you just really hit the nail on the head with. Lots of cool stuff coming though. Anyway, we're losing viewers left and right. We were up to nine, and then I went on crazy rant, and then we're down to five, and that's if that's not the story of my life, I don't know what it is, and I don't even care. It's fine. I'm glad you guys are sticking around. Um, you understand what I'm doing. I don't really understand what I'm doing, but you seem to. So keep watching. Let's do anise. <clears throat> I've, I've got anise seed. I've got anise extract. And I've got fennel seed. I don't have star anise. And I don't have licorice. But all of those things, uh, they, they, they're all actually different plants. Um, but they all share a chemical compound called anethyl. A-N-E-T-H-O-L-E. -E. And not what somebody with a lisp calls me when I make fun of them, an athol, uh, as they rightly should. That's a, a, that joke is in poor taste, but I couldn't think of a better one off the top of my head. Um, the, the, the best part about that joke is it actually correctly identifies that I'm being the asshole in that situation. Anyway, anise is an ethyl, which is licorice. That's the flavor. It is found in so many different plants. It's found in so many different roots, but they all have that same flavor. It's kind of fun. Same smell pretty much too. You smell that fennel? You know what? These aren't labeled right. I think these are the same damn thing. Wait, are anise seeds the same as fennel? They smell exactly the same. I may have just bought anise seeds for no reason. That seems right. Yeah, Yolanda, go make some flannel for him. <laughs> I know you wear t-shirts. I know you wear t-shirts, Trevor, so don't act like you don't. Anyway, what whiskeys did I find that had anise in them? Well, as you would expect, because it's always in here, Knob Creek, Twice Barreled Rye. <laughs> What else has anise in it? Oh, oh, did I not pull this one out? I think I forgot to pull a bottle out, guys. The other one was Weller 107, which was a very surprising note. Who gave that note? Okay, Breaking Bourbon said this had cinnamon and black licorice. And I basically just said black licorice, um, you know, close enough. Licorice, anethol. You get it. I also just really like this whiskey, so one of the poor of it. But I, the one that I've forgotten, let me go see if I can find it real quick. Don't leave. Well, crap. Where is it? Sazerac Rye. Okay. Sazerac Rye. 
and Ethel. Anyway. I'm excited about the Sazerac Rye because uh... <laughs> oh man. And Jaeger bombs. Oh god. Yeah, Trevor, that's uh that black licorice is not my favorite flavor, which is actually why I'm kind of excited about this because I do think that uh, I do think that the Sazerac Rye in particular really has that anise note. Now fennel and uh, fennel has a little bit more of this. Um, <laughs> don't ruin one of them for me. This licorice talk. <laughs> When you compare, so I've got anise extract and anise seed. And when you compare them, they're pretty different. Uh, anise seed smells a lot more like sausage. If you've ever had um, Christmas sausage, yeah, ground fennel on pork, exactly. Exactly, that kind of, it's less licorice-y, but the, it brings out more of the spice notes of the anise. Whereas this anise extract is going to be used for like Christmas cookies and it's going to be a lot more licorice-y. So it can kind of, that's a, that's an important thing to note though, is that anise can kind of bounce between that uh, anethyl note, can bounce between something that's more sweet and, 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 and licorice-like or something that's more savory and almost uh, herbal. So it's a variable uh, variable spice. So let's go ahead and side by side it with a couple of whiskeys. I'm going to go ahead and take notes so I know what the hell I've already done, what I've talked about, and what I haven't. Oh, by the way, star anise and anise seed are not from the same plant. I thought they were. We looked it up. They are not. Um, anise seed is going to be more tepid and less spicy. Than the star anise. Let's start with a Sazerac rye. The only reason I got the Sazerac rye is for this specific note. So I really want to see if it's there. And I tell you what. If you go with the organic anise seed, not picking up very much. But if you go with the anise extract, that licorice note, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely there. Which is interesting because Breaking Bourbon said clove and anise on the Sazerac rye. Clove. Put them next to each other. Clove and anise. Oh, that's so interesting. So when you combined anise and clove, it really changes the character of the anise. It becomes way less herbal, and it becomes less licorice-y. It basically becomes this sort of solid backbone. It almost becomes like a cinnamon-esque backbone. I do feel like the Sazerac rye has more of a licorice component, though. It definitely has some of that anise, but I really get licorice on the Sazerac rye. Boy, on the palate, very dry, very herbal. I think the anise note on the Sazerac comes more from the combination of the smell and the taste. When you put those together, then you really start to, to notice that uh, you've got something that's more like, um, more like anise and less like licorice. Damn it. I get that fly. I am doing ginger tonight, Nate. That is going to happen. 
Um, Trevor, it's not my favorite ride, to be honest with you. Sazerac ride just doesn't do it for me. Let's see about, let's put the clove away. Let's see about the Weller 107. Let's see if I can't ruin this for D Brown. <laughs> or try not to. Oh, wait a minute. Wow, I have never noticed that before. Wow. So that's so weird. So the Weller Antique 107, and this, by the way, is a corked bottle, so it's a new bottle, and it's not a store pick, just so you know. Did I ever pick up Old Forester Rye? I've got uh, the Rare Breed Rye. I don't think I have a standard Old Forester Rye on hand right now. Um, but the 107... I can definitely see licorice, black licorice, but it's not, it's not this strong as this anise extract. It's much more herbal. It's subtle, but it's there. Yeah. Cinnamon and cinnamon and, 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 uh, cinnamon and black licorice is a pretty accurate note, which is interesting because I don't usually like black licorice, but it's so subtle. That I really like it. All right. What was the last one? Oh. The Knob Creek. Now, just for reference, the note on the Knob Creek that gave us a um, licorice note was whiskey jug. And I really thought they were spot on with their cocoa note. For the licorice, I'm kind of leaning more on the anise extract. The anise seed is a lot more herbal. Yeah, I don't know if D. Brown saw this before. This is the twice-barreled Knob Creek Rye. I'm specifically using that one because it does kind of narrow down the field a little bit. It gives me um, – there are more – there's going to be less variants bottle to bottle because there aren't as many, and it's still one I can find a lot of reviews on. I can get – I get the licorice note, but again, it's super subtle. I think I've had licorice notes on whiskeys that I did not like. And it's kind of fun. And, and maybe that's the Sazerac rye. Maybe that's a great example of one. I don't care for the Sazerac rye because the licorice note is too prominent. It involves too much of the anise seed, that sharpness. Whereas the licorice, when I'm finding it on several of these, is pretty subtle. And that's kind of fun. That, that You know what that tells me is I might find licorice more often than I would have thought. I would have said I wouldn't have said licorice on this if I had done a review. But smelling it, and then smelling the Anna's extract, and then smelling the the whiskey again, it definitely has that licorice note. It's just subtle enough that it's not intrusive. It's not bothersome. Yeah, the twice the twice barreled rye is really fantastic, man. It's one I, I highly recommend it. Um, it's got some great cocoa notes that I like. It's sweet. It's mellow. It, it just does all the things I like it to. And it, I bought them for really cheap, but I think they're still in like 40, 50 bucks, maybe. A worthwhile pour. All right. Let's move on. I don't want to sit here and do that all night. Let's do mint. Let's do mint. I got mint here. Let's do it. Um... Now, there are two different types of mint. There are more than two different types of mint. We're going to talk about two different types of mint. I've got this mint. And I've got this mint. Can you spot the difference? 
One of these mints is spearmint, and one of these mints is peppermint. Yeah, there are not many twice barreled rides. It's kind of a fun novelty. This here is spearmint. And this here is peppermint. What's the difference? Why do we care? Well, spearmint and peppermint mainly differ in how much menthol they have in them. I wrote this down somewhere. I want to give you the right percentages, but my notes are pretty shoddy. Here we are. Peppermint is about 40% menthol in terms of its flavor profile, whereas spearmint is 0.05% menthol. So spearmint is going to be much more gentle, much more sweet. The minty note will be more subtle, whereas peppermint is going to be more explosive. Think about menthol. Think about the applications where you've used or had menthol in the past. It's prominent. It's aggressive. One of the reasons you see a lot of mint juleps using spearmint instead of peppermint is because of the gentle and sweet nature of the mint. Nonetheless, we will try them both and we will smell them both. My hands smell like all kinds of other spices. Let me use a little bit of this orange here to cleanse them. Ooh, now they smell like orange. <laughs> I mean, duh, but it's also very nice. Okay. <clears throat> Which whiskeys have mint in them? Uh, of the list that I've got here, um, <coughs> the Noah's Mill. On the Noah's Mill, mint was found by Whiskey Wash. Actually, mint was found on Noah's Mill by Flavair and Whiskey Wash. So cinnamon and mint were notes that were consistently found in Noah's Mill. We'll visit cinnamon in a minute. Cinnamon in a minute. Cinnamon in a minute. Mint for now. Mint for now, cinnamon in a minute. <laughs> okay. Mint was also a note on, yep, our old friend, Old Forester 1910. That was from Whiskey Shelf. We'll give that a try. They said cinnamon and mint on the nose, which I'm a little confused by. Finally, one I have not yet poured. I'm cheating a little bit on this one. I said this was a bourbon tasting, but... This is Irish whiskey. Method and Madness, single grain. It is single grain. It's matured in bourbon barrels. It's finished in virgin Spanish oak. It's as close to a bourbon as you can get if you're not making it in the United States. For all intents and purposes, it is bourbon. But that one has mint on the palate, not on the nose. Actually, I think, so the Noah's Mill had mint on the nose. The OF 1910, mint on the nose. Method of Madness, mint on the palate. So, <clears throat> yes, deep brown. there are, oops. There is definitely mint on Four Roses. I can't remember which mash bill, though. One of the mash bills specifically references mint. If somebody wants to find that out and throw it in the chat, I would love to have that information. I'm going to break off a leaf of spearmint. Man, this, this peppermint smells like weed. All right. Spearmint and peppermint. Yeah, it's so much. It's so much more minty. That, that that menthol shows up. This is sort of like a sweet, sweet herb. It almost reminds me of eucalyptus in a way. This thing, this thing is aggressive and powerful and potent and sharp. A little bit less sweet. Pretty pretty mild. 
super minty. Holy crap. Yes, it is the F. Um, the F rye strain is the minty one. I unfortunately don't believe I have any of that handy. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tasted both mints. I've smelled both mints. Let's go ahead and try some whiskeys with the mints in them. I don't know why I'm hitting this against the table. Just need more whiskey. All right. Let's start with Noah's Mill. Yeah, I can definitely see it on the on the spearmint. Not as much on the peppermint. The, the Noah's Mill is definitely creamy spearmint on the nose. It's like creamy spearmint straight up. And that's that youth. I was telling you that for me, Noah's Mill is not very good because it smells like basically a young whiskey that was mixed with 20-year whiskey by mistake. And young whiskey to me often has this sort of sharp menthol kind of vibe, which is made me think actually it was going to be a little bit more peppermint. But um, yeah, it's just kind of – and that to me is a classic Willet note. Willet to me is creamy mint. That's what I'm getting. Let's take a nip just for the road here. All right, let's move over to the one that I'm the most skeptical of. Old Forest 1910. I did not get mint on this at all. Nate said, I feel like rye's high rye mash tends to have the most mint for me. I do find a lot of mint on rye's, that's true, and high rye mashes. I think I just got him. Damn it. <clears throat> I'm going to get that fly. <laughs> oh, I know what their point. It's not mint. That's just wrong. That's wrong. That's a bad note. Whiskey shelf. Sorry, brother. Bad note. <clears throat> but I know why they said it. Here's why they said it. They said it because... They didn't know how to identify what that thing was going on with the... There's a chocolatey note. If you go into it thinking just chocolate, go into 1910 and smell it and go, I'm only going to smell chocolate. When you do that, you're like, oh, there's this weird expressive, um, sharp brightness that isn't chocolate. Without any other information, you might go, oh, it's like a peppermint patty. I can see that. It's not really minty, but it's got some other thing happening. Take a drink of that just for the road, too. Now, finally, the Method of Madness. This one has mint on the finish. It smells like ethanol and not very good. It is minty on the finish, though. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's minty on the finish. That's super weird. <laughs> that is, of all three of them, that's the most accurate mint quality I've found by a lot. It is very much herbal and sweet, but slightly and sharp it's just it's it, it is spearmint i don't think any of these really were embodying peppermint but that's not surprising because the methanol is so overpowering if you if you have peppermint in your whiskey it's just going to taste like fucking rumple mints or some shit like aged rumple mints you know what's crazy is after I taste that Method of Madness and the finish comes, I just want to get that mint flavor. I can smell these more prominently. The mint that's sitting next to me becomes a lot more po um, uh, 
potent or or fragrant or I don't know. I just really it really shows up. We got a debate about nineteen ten versus uh, nineteen ten versus double oaked. Remind me at the end of this, and I might bring that one back in too. <clears throat> What do we have left? We got cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, and ginger. I feel like cinnamon, nutmeg, and clove all kind of fit into the same vibe. Let's do ginger. Ginger's kind of an outlier there for me. Oh, and that means I get to do something very special live on the air. So let's talk about ginger for a minute. First, I've got ground ginger, but I've also got ginger root. And my beautiful and um, just amazing, wonderful darling of a partner told me not to cut the root in half, just to cut off a piece of it. it smells very good. It's sweet. It's sharp. It's a little bit, um, in a weird way, this is the fruitiest of the notes that we found. I feel like, you know, some herbal notes can be more savory, some can be more sweet. This one is legitimately kind of fruity. Well, I'll have to go find that, Nate, and figure out what note that, which one that was. <sighs> Let's compare that to the dried ginger because they are going to be different. Oh, they are so different. Dried ginger is much, um, <clears throat> much less fruity. The dried ginger is a lot more chocolatey, to be honest. It reminds me of a chocolate. The, that powdery, sweet, dry. It doesn't have the bottom end of a chocolate. But, wow, those are, like, totally different things. Okay. Now, the first time... Ginger shows up is in the Jefferson's Ocean Calf Strength, age 14. This is in a review by Drink Hacker, who said, Baking spice generally, a bullshit note, which we will address at the end of this video, and gingerbread. <laughs> Let's see if I find gingerbread. And I'll tell you what, it smells a whole lot like that dry ginger. It doesn't smell anything, though, like fresh ginger. Not a thing. That, to me, is really, really valuable. If you want to think about... Uh, I think a lot of people, like, they, they still have to... You know, hold on, I got these. <coughs> oh, gross. I think a lot of people um, are still working on those preliminary notes. Like, you still want to be able to pick ginger out of a lineup, pick cinnamon out of a lineup. Keep working on that. But... I strongly recommend, even if you're still working on your basic notes, get some fresh ginger root, cut it up, and do it next to regular ginger because fresh ginger and regular ginger are different enough they shouldn't even be in the same category. Unlike the allspice versus the licorice or the, the anise, sorry, unlike the anise versus the uh, anise extract, which are very similar with slight difference, this is a totally different world. So I think the note of... Uh, yeah, I finally got that pepper out of my nose. I think I think the uh, D Brown says he goes for oak or bust. Trevor, you, Trevor, you you and he might get along on that one. I think the 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 fruitiness, the sweetness, the roundedness of the regular ginger. If you've ever had pickled ginger with sushi, it's a lot closer to ginger root. Um, if you've had a ginger snap or ginger bread, it's much closer to dry ginger. And I think because of that. This Jefferson's Ocean, to me, is a lot more like the dried ginger. It's like gingerbread. Uh, that's a good note. Good note, drink hacker. Your baking spice note is garbage, but I think that's a good note for the ginger snap or gingerbread. Now, ginger's a hard note to find. Um, just willy nilly looking through my whiskey collection and Googling to see what people thought of. But I found. Uh, whiskey again. I'm cheating a little bit because I said this was all going to be bourbons. 
I found a whiskey that does have ginger as a note, and it's one that I have not opened yet. Glen Grant 15. This is an unopened bottle. We're doing some fresh pops on a Sunday. That's how we live in out here. Cheers to the Colts victory. Cheers to the IU Hoosiers almost winning against Ohio State. They put up a good fight. I still I still uh, won my little my little bet. Beat the spread. Oh yeah. It's a good one. Can I get a mod to delete Nate's last comment? Thanks. It doesn't help because Nate is a mod. <clears throat> Am I out of glasses? All right. Well, fuck it. We'll find a glass here somewhere. Glasses. Yeah. Okay. This is going to be a pretty long live stream. I kind of realizing that as I'm doing this. Yeah. Deep process America. Yeah, I uh, I need to work with Matt, ADHD Whiskey. I need to figure out a way to work with him. Seems like a good dude. Oh, first connection is unstable of the night. That's the first time that's happened. That's fun. Also, batch strength is a bullshit note. Don't put batch strength on your bottle. What the fuck is batch strength, Glenn Grant? It's 50% alcohol. That's not batch strength. I hate nonsense marketing, if you can't tell. Now, the Glenn Grant 15, move my hunk of ginger here, that... Uh, the notes on the Glen Grant 15 were, quote, this is a direct quote from Masters of Malt, Christmas spice and ginger. Christmas spice. Smell like Santa's balls? I don't know. Christmas spice. God damn, that's good stuff. I like this ginger. I like this ginger root. The ginger's, the dry ginger's fine. But the ginger root, that's where it's at. That's the good stuff. That's that uncut. That's that pure, pure. Okay. Let's smell the Grand Clan 15. What am I doing, guys? Oh, my God. Oh, you know what? Oh, boy. Yes. Oh, that makes me way too happy. Okay. This just, I had, you saw, I've never had the Glen Grand 15. You watched me open it on camera. I was really hopeful that I would find an example of ginger spice in terms of the dried and ginger fresh. And we have Glen Grant 15 is ginger root. It is that fruity, gingery beautifulness of cutting a piece of that root off. The red nose spice deer. Maybe that's what they meant by Christmas spice. They got drunk and they were like, hey, it's just like tearing the root off the red nosed reindeer. Oh, yeah. God, that's, that is a beautiful whiskey. I got to do a review on this shit. This is beautiful. It is just peppers. I know, D Brown. I know 50% is near casting. And that's why they said it. Like, the proof goes down in Scottish cast. That's why they're getting those low-ass proof numbers. I get it. Yeah, Nate wants a sample. Thanks. Boy, that is beautiful. I get lots of pears. Lots of honey. And then this ginger root. I'm going to cut it again. That ginger is way too dry. You need to cut it. Please do not demonetize me, YouTube. I'm not even monetized yet. I don't give a fuck. OT Genesis, come at me, bro. Yeah, that is, that is crazy how accurate that is. That is so, so close to fresh ginger. Holy crap. Like, it's basically just pears and ginger. That's it. 
if you took pears and ginger root and you stewed them in a pot together with a little bit of honey, you've got Glen Grant 15 on the nose. At least fresh pops. That's, uh, you know, there's always that grain of salt. But what are you going to do? God, I could nose this forever. I'm just going to drink it and we'll move on. Oh. That's that it's it, that's a solid that's a solid space side. But if you don't like scotch, you aren't gonna like it. A lot of those space sides they have that briny quality. And it's and it's subtle on this, it's very subtle, but it's there. Um, mid palette finishes that got this a little bit of woodiness and a little bit of brine. Um so it's not gonna be for everyone. <laughs> I'll get drunk. That's what I'll do. That's what, apparently that's what I'm doing too, D Brown. Well, that's great. That's cool stuff, guys. These these are such different pours. The Jefferson's Ocean and the Glen Grant 15 are such different pours, but they both have ginger in them. Um, Kyle, try that O L H Q State Pick Spaber and see if you get ginger. Okay, I'll be right back. This is what Nate is referring to. Nate's on a power trip. That's fine. Something weird's going on in there. We'll ignore it for now. I've done a little more damage to this ball than I thought I had. Um, so, spay burn. Looking for ginger in all the wrong places. That cork is too loose also. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Oh, man, it's so good. Apples and pears. Um, kind of. It's not as, it's not as blatant as that Glenn Grant. Yeah, so the 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 sweet fruitiness of the ginger raw ginger comes through on the spay burn and the Glen Grant both, but the Glen Grant has the ginger spice that's present both in the dried and the raw, and that's not coming through on the spay burn. Um, so I think it's got some ginger esque components, but that Glen Grant is like straight up ginger and pear. The finish is a lot longer on the Glen Grant than that Spayburn, um, but it's got more of those things that are going to be challenging to bourbon drinkers. So um, I'd be curious what your thoughts are on side, blind side by side on, on those with a couple other space sides. We should do that, Nate. Next time we get a chance, we'll do some space side side by sides because I've got a lot of space side whiskey. I've discovered I quite enjoy space side scotches. <clears throat> That'd be a fun one to do a side by side with. Oh, okie dokie. Let's get into the cloves. What is this? That's that. Okay. Do I have any cutesy notes for the cloves? No, I don't. Only got three left. This is that's a shout out to Yolanda up there. I don't know if she heard me or not. So, cloves are fun. <laughs> that's, that's my big fucking note. Cloves are fun. I will say, 
Ground versus Raw. Um, very similar. <laughs> yeah, Yolanda's called me K-Dog now. Super weird. Maybe I'll start calling her Maverick and she can call me Goose. Good Top Gun reference. Uh, uh, Deep Brown says, I have about 50 bottles and one of them is Scotch Spayburn. Uh, I'm curious, D. Brown, what is your Spayburn? Which one you got, my man? Cloves are great for people who drink coffee. It's a natural and long-lasting breath freshener. Good call, Nate. I will chew up a clove at the end of this video in your honor. Not really in your honor, more just because it makes me smile. Okay, so whiskeys, where did my pen go? Ah, there it is. So the whiskeys that gave me, not me, we'll see, maybe me. The whiskeys that gave reviewers clove, Jefferson's Oceans 14, Noah's Mill, no, what? She it. has to make an appearance in every stream. Apparently, she has to make an appearance in every stream. This is the doggo. She's a little pain in the butt. And she's going to go outside now. Can you say hello to the people at home? She is like, please let me go. Take me away from here. All right, so cloves are in. Jefferson's Ocean, cast strength. Ooh, D. Brown, companion cask, 92 proof. Hmm, I'd love a photo of that one. Uh, and a sample, <laughs> but I'll take a photo. Um, uh, what was I doing? Okay, I got all distracted because D. Brown was talking about some good shit. Um, Local store did a pick. Yeah, man. Send me a photo of that on, on one of my social platforms. I'd love to see it. At the Drink Pro everywhere if you're not following. <clears throat> Clove. Jefferson's Ocean. Cast Strength. Uh, Voyage 14. Rare Breed. That's one I have not yet poured. Breaking out the Rare Breed bourbon. This is going to be an empty bottle soon because I've got another bottle coming. Shout out to my mods. Using all my fucking glassware tonight. This is, by the way, if you're curious, the 116.8 proof rare breed. Um, Nate says, Ohio did a state pick of a companion cask as well. It's very good, but not that high a pick. And then he says, what kind of guy is giving you a rare breed? Real sucker, I guess. 116.8 proof. That's the rare breed I'm relying on. That's the rare breed which had the tasting note of clove in it. And the person that gave that tasting note was none other than Rare Bird 101. A reliable source of the whiskeys from Wild Turkey. Rare Bird 101 does a lot of stuff with Wild Turkey. So I, I expect that to be there. Otherwise, we're going to have to have a chat with Rare Bird 101. <laughs> like I have some kind of authority with Rare Bird 101. Okay, so got the Rare Breed, got the Jefferson's Ocean. I've got the Sazerac. By the way, the Sazerac had clove and anise we've already done the side by side so i'll be curious to see how the clove on its own does and finally the method madness now, i already mentioned the mint in the method madness we'll see if the clove also shows up on the finish on the finish i love the smell of that um Let's start with this Jefferson's Ocean because uh, I think it's an interesting note. What's? I think that's the pen you lost. I've got a pen. Well, you said where's my pen? I found it. Oh, uh, well, that was by the. Okay. 
So I'll use the pen that was just thrown at me. Um, we've done already, Ginger. Uh, so let's do Jefferson's Ocean uh, 14. The uh, clove in this was found by the one and only Reddit fuser uh, smoked underscore herring. <clears throat> no, you know, he, you know, a broken clock's right twice a day. Smoke underscore herring is wrong about this one. Wrong, wrong, wrong. There's just not, I've got a bunch of oil gallon, but thank you. I'm trying to be helpful. Can you make food? I'm getting there. Okay. Um, yeah, the Jefferson's Ocean, I mean, it smells good. But it doesn't, it does not smell like cloves. I'm trying to articulate why. I mean, to me, cheesesteak. We got Philly cheesesteak coming. Um, to me, the Jefferson's Ocean, the baking spice in it, it's much more in the ginger realm. It's maybe in the cinnamon realm. But it's, it's not clove. Clove, is, clove has a particular sharp spiciness that's just not in the Jefferson's Ocean. Um, I'm going to wait for the rare breed. I'm going to do that one last. Sazerac. And that's closer. But, you know, so the, the, the sharpness is definitely in the Sazerac rye. But for me, the mint shows up more in the Sazerac rye. Um, I get mint and anise in the Sazerac rye. Where'd that anise go? When I put the cloves and anise together... That's that's really closer. I mean, there's something weird about that combination. And, you know, big, big shout out to Breaking Bourbon on that one because that's what's so cool about that to me is Breaking Bourbon figured out that it's not cloves separate. It's not anise separate. It's the combination of the two. If you put cloves and anise together, they smell like the Sazerac rye. Hat tip to them because that is tough. What is there? Is there a bug in my fucking? This is great screen. This little fucker has been bothering me all day, and his brother is flying around me. This little fucker has been bothering me all day, and decided to take a nap in my Sazerac. Unacceptable fly. I had the last laugh, though. I humaned and kept persevering. That's what we do. That's what human beings do. We fight and we survive. Let me drink some more whiskey, huh? Okay. <clears throat> What's next? What is next? Let's do the method of madness. They said this. I don't know why I'm speaking like this now. Hi, it's Irish whiskey, I suppose. Makes me speak like the Irish, or at least a bad stereotype. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to say, this doesn't smell like cloves at all. No, the cloves are supposedly on the finish of the Method Madness. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. And uh, by the way, one thing I really like about Method Madness is they put these fun tasting notes right on the back of the bottle. That's great. That's great. That's cool. I love it. This is, a, I mean, Method of Madness, if you don't know, um, Method and Madness is actually a part of the Middleton Distillery, which is a humongous Irish whiskey distributor. But what they're doing with Method and Madness specifically is small batch, unique, experimental Irish whiskeys. 
That to me is so cool. They recognize that you couldn't use a factory like Jameson or the other Middleton products and make experimental one-off side batches. So they created a whole distillery within the distillery to do experiments. That's freaking great. Hats off to them. I'm taking my hat off a lot tonight, apparently, but hats off to them for being willing to try something new and different and push it and see what they can come up with. That's cool. I like that. Let's taste it. Now, the notes on the back of the Method of Madness actually say clove spiciness. I'm really not getting that, guys. I'm really not. I mean, I think you could probably, you can make yourself believe there's clove in that. But it's a stretch. It's just there's not that much clove in it. There's really not. <clears throat> rare breed's the only one left. I have not found a good clove example yet. Maybe rare breed will show it up for me. Where's that ground? Where's that ground clove? Because I think the clove in the rare breed is super subtle. And so what I'm gonna do is take a little tiny bit of clove and put it in one of these um, glass bowls that I've got here. So I can just get it a little bit more subtly because that th those whole cloves are going straight to the dome. Yes, uh, thank you for clarifying, D. Brown. Rare breed bourbon. This is the barrel proof rare breed bourbon. This is at 116.8. So it's the most recent proof of the rare breed that we're um, running on here. <laughs> I only laugh because I read a, a review of the rare breed where the first the, the, their their notes on the on the nose were peanuts, peanuts, and more peanuts, and I'm like, that's a bullshit garbage review. But my first smell right there was straight up peanuts, so uh, maybe I was a little quick to judge. I think if you spend more time with it, it becomes something other than peanuts. But if you just go in for a cursory nosing, I get it. I get it now. Yeah, I think this is the closest one. It's still way more subtle. I think what's happening is a lot of people are confusing the rye spice and clove. And maybe that is where clove comes up in a bourbon because I didn't have very many good examples of clove tonight. I mean, I tried a lot of different, four different whiskeys that all claim to have clove notes from expert reviewers. And um, I mean, I think that's the, maybe the best example. I don't know the we that weird combo of the clove and the anise with the Sazerac rye is really a standout, but um, just clove is hard to find. For me, the rare breed, because it is a high rye mash build, like everything at Wild Turkey, um, you get that sort of rye spice, and it's similar to the clove spice. It's sweet rye spice, smells very much like clove, but there's, there's some specific narrow potency that's missing. I can't quite put my finger on it, but... I don't think any of these are particularly good examples of clove. If you know of a whiskey that you think is a particularly good example of clove, send me a DM at the drink pro pretty much everywhere. Facebook, Instagram, email, the drink pro at gmail.com, wherever. Let me know what you think. Um, because I would love to try some other examples of clove and see if I can't find a bourbon where I'm like, yes, that is clove. Because none of these really met that met that bar. Which is funny because I was much more worried about a lot of these other spices. I figure some of these spices are just not going to show up right. A lot of them did. Uh, the clove did not. So that's sad. But now we get to move to our penultimate spice. 
nutmeg. Now, nutmeg is one of my personal favorite spices in food and to smell and find. Um, I'm a sucker for it. I'm sensitive to it. The two whiskeys where nutmeg was noted is the Rare Breed, which is in the Whiskey Jug Review. Oh, and the Rare Bird 101 Review. Um, so Rare Bird found clove. I can see it. It wasn't good. It wasn't powerful. It wasn't potent, I should say. Uh, but both uh, Rare Bird 101 and the Whiskey Jug found nutmeg in Rare Breed. So we should probably see some nutmeg in Rare Breed, which might be why I like Rare Breed so much, because I love nutmeg. The other whiskey where I have nutmeg as a common note was in the Knob Creek Twice Barreled Rye, and the nutmeg was by Go Bourbon. Go Bourbon. It's like a sports team. Go Bourbon. Let's start with the Twice Barreled Rye. Oh, that is a good smelling rye, though. If you haven't had the Twice Barreled Rye, you should pick one up. It is... I mean, it's good bang for your buck, honestly. I really, I'm a, I like some of the Knob Creek stuff. I wouldn't call myself a big Knob Creek fanboy, but maybe I am more than I thought I was because I really like that 15 special release and the 15 year um, single barrel picks have been all quite good. But boy, that twice barrel ride does it, it just hits different. It hits good. Nutmeg. Nutmeg is like gentle, sweeter. Cloves with more citrus vibes. I don't know if that means anything. Who cares? We're in hour, we're almost in hour three of this. <laughs> let's put let's put some of this in here. Yeah, I can see that. It's subtle. Um, much like with the clove, the nutmeg has this sort of sharpness, this, this sharp herbal, almost peppery quality. It's almost a black pepper quality. Um, if you take that away from the nutmeg, then you can totally find all the other notes in the Knob Creek Twice Barrel Rye on the nose. The black pepper doesn't really show up for me in this context. Um, Breaking Bourbon found white pepper in the uh, Knob Creek Twice Barrel Rye, but they didn't find nutmeg. So maybe that's where this kind of relationship is coming up. But for me, it's just, it's just more cinnamon. Go Bourbon said cinnamon and nutmeg. Whiskey Jug said cherry, licorice, and cocoa. Breaking Bourbon said white pepper. I get the cherry, not the licorice. I get hints of cocoa. I get lots of cinnamon, not very much nutmeg, and a little bit of white pepper. So I think they're all kind of half right. Meh. That's very meh for me. In terms of nutmeg, I really like the pour, but it's just not very nutmeg -y. All right. Rare breed. Here we go. Uh, who was the one that said this? Whiskey Jug. Whiskey Jug said... Oh, these are terrible notes. Whiskey Jug said nutmeg and herbal, and Rare Bird 101 said nutmeg and clove. We'll see. I don't know why clove was in quotes, but herbal deserved to be in quotes. Also, I will say this has been open for quite some time. It had a lot of air on it, so that's very possibly um, affecting the pour. Yeah, this is... Wait, 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 wait. So... So I felt like this was more nutmeg than clove, but what happens if I smell them together? Oh, <clears throat> the demons are coming out. All right, not making club together.
Yep, that's it. See, now this is valuable information, guys. I, I'm learning a lot about this because sometimes it's hard to pick apart specific notes, but when you combine them, you get different things. The smell of nutmeg and clove together mixed with a lot of honey, frankly, and rye spice is what I'm getting with this rare breed nose. But it kind of only feels like it's half right if you go into it looking for clove or if you go into it looking for nutmeg. You're like, yeah, that's close. It's not quite right. But if you go both, if you go with nutmeg and clove, it's right on the money. It's nutmeg, clove, honey, and a little bit of rye spice. So think about your herbs in combination form. Yeah, I definitely think that's why people say allspice, but it's important to remember, again, allspice is a specific spice. It's not all spices. If you want to say it's got an interesting baking spice note, then you probably will, and that's how I made this video. Because people keep making the note of, well, it smells like baking spice. That's not a note. Baking spice is a genre. It's like saying, well, that's a, you know, I watched a comedy last night. Well, which comedy did you watch? Did you watch a slapstick comedy? Did you watch a black comedy? And I don't mean African-American, I mean black humor. Or maybe you did. Maybe you watched some sort of black exploitation film, like Black Dynamite. I don't know. What kind of comedy did you watch? Wow, this turned into a rant really fast. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get canceled. Yeah, I'm going to get canceled real soon here, guys. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> Nate said he's sorry to have opened that box. Okay, is that all of them? Is that all the notes? No, I haven't. The biggest one! I still haven't done it! Cinnamon. You heard it, maybe, from the other room. Cinnamon. This is the Saigon, roasted Saigon cinnamon. <laughs> It's the best one. I got so much cinnamon, bro. Now, I thought about buying cinnamon sticks and ground cinnamon. Um, it's all the same. Yeah, it's all the same. Who cares a shit? Okay. Cinnamon. Uh, that's found in Noah's Mill. That's found in OF 1910. That's found in Weller Antique 107. And it's found in the Knob Creek Twice Barreled Rye. So let's go left to right, and we'll start with... Wait, what is this? That's the rare breed. Yeah. Let's start with the Old Force 1910. Yeah, uh, Trevor said he got some serious cinnamon on the Stag Jr. The only reason I didn't do Stag Jr. is I couldn't find the right batch that had cinnamon in it based on what I had bottles of. Um, I know there are some samples uh, that I've got cinnamon on, but I'm slowly killing those samples for the Patreon. Patreon.com slash the drink pro. Shameless plug. Okay. I will say, um, part of the reason I bought the Saigon cinnamon was because someone told me that uh, it was more potent and different than regular cinnamon. Oh, I love this. Nate just posted this comment. My dad has Mexican, Mexican cinnamon sticks from his community in Mexico, and it's very different from the cinnamon we get here. I was just about to say, this Saigon cinnamon that I'm using... Uh, is much different than the standard cinnamon that I've smelled elsewhere. I have insight. I'm not getting on camera, though. I look like garbage. Okay. So, real cinnamon... Excuse me? Oh, I see. Real cinnamon is very expensive, and so people actually replace cinnamon that you would get at, it, at the store with the bark of a different tree. I don't know the name of it right now. Very good information. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> All right, so. That no, 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 no. There's no cinnamon in 1910. That's poppycock and balderdash. Hogwash. Yeah, she really is the producer, D. Brown. You're 100 percent right. What? D. Brown called you the producer. Of what? The show. Oh yeah. I like TV. Yeah. 
I mean, if you're looking for it, you can find it. But like cinnamon is not the predominant or even the secondary or even the tertiary note in OF 1910. Cinnamon, you can find cinnamon, but it's not really what's happening there. But it's kind of there, just ever so slightly. So I won't totally shit on the person who puts cinnamon as an OF 1910 note. Whiskey shelf. Although I did shit on whiskey shelf, I think, for the mint note in 1910. So, you know. All right, next is Weller 107. The cinnamon note in that was from Breaking Bourbon. They said cinnamon and black licorice. I mean, that's spot on. That is spot on. I get a little bit of black licorice in the 107, but it's pretty subtle. We talked about that before. This is cinnamon. This is cinnamon. This is the corked version of Weller Antique 107, not a store pick. If you smell that, it is caramelized sugar, almond extract, and cinnamon. Those are your three notes. All right, take a sip of that just for the road here. What else we got? Noah's Mill. Noah's Mill. Oh, I really don't like Noah's Mill, but I do think there's some cinnamon in it. It sounded like a cheerleader. <laughs> You'll honestly I sound like a cheerleader. <laughs> Nate really wants me to find, uh, <laughs> Trevor says, I thought an earthquake was happening when you hit the table. I'm just so passionate about my whiskey, Trev. Nate said, cinnamon and EHBP A120, it's sweeter version on the nose and raw version on the finish. Do you want me to get the A120? Should I go grab it? The Noah's Mill has definitely got cinnamon. It's just, uh. Well, you are an idiot, Nate, but I'll just see how big of one. Don't worry, people that are not Nate. It's all love. I'm getting a faint hint of cheesesteak. <laughs> <laughs> My cinnamon is starting to smell more and more savory. Almost a new mommy note. With a hint of cheese. I mean, there's definitely, definitely cinnamon on Noah's Mill. It doesn't have the sharpness of a Saigon cinnamon. Uh, but there's definitely cinnamon there. Not good bourbon, though. Gross. Okay. What else had cinnamon? The Knob Creek. All right, let's throw the signs off. <sighs> yeah, that's pretty cinnamony, guys. Um, the one, the drink hacker had baking spice and gingerbread, and smoked herring had clove and allspice. When he said allspice, smoked. When smoked herring said allspice, he meant or she, I guess. I don't know who smoked herring is. Smoked herring meant. Cinnamon. They said, that's a spice. I don't know what it is. It's all spice. No, it's fucking cinnamon. Um, clove, I can see a little bit of maybe, kind of, maybe, sort of, but definitely ginger. Definitely, again, Drink Hacker said baking spice. No, it's cinnamon. It's cinnamon. All right, I'm going to get that A1. I almost put the cap on the bourbon. That's not how bourbon works. I'm going to grab the A120. You guys sit tight, and we'll see if it's got cinnamon. Now, I'll tell you what. A120 is not, not one of my favorite Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs. Um, 
never care for it much. But, uh, you know, here we are doing a live stream. Gonna drink some of it for the people because that's why I do all of this nonsense for you guys. What the hell is that? Oh, that's the chewed up mint. Okay. Let's see if A120 has some uh, cinnamon in it. Oh, and by the way, uh, all right, I'm uh, running out of glassware. By the way, get your pre-orders now for the new Drink Pro glassware. It's coming. Hit me up for details. Hit me up. Post some DMs for details on the Drink Pro glassware. That's coming soon. Version 2.0. All right, this is the Elijah Craig A120. Nate believes he finds cinnamon. Let's see if I agree. Actually, before I do that, this is going to be a great parlay into the rest of the evening because what I've got left on the table, i still got several whiskeys I haven't tried yet, but I've got several whiskeys where what the notes I found on the internet were is baking spice. And we went through this whole two-hour process to explain and highlight that Baking spice is not a note, it's not a monolith, and there are a bunch of different baking spices that you need to be able to pick out if you're going to be a professional reviewer. Your average Joe on the street, they can get away with saying baking spice, that's fine. But if you're a professional reviewer, if you're writing blogs and you're making money from trying to be a whiskey taster, you need to be more specific than baking spice. So we've got some pours that have baking spice as a note on professional review sites. I won't say which ones because I'm lambasting these people so hard for doing it. But we will see if we can't find some more specific notes based on what we've done tonight. Let's start with the Elijah Craig A120 just because I want to see if there's cinnamon in it. First off, right off the bat, there's definitely mint in this. D Brown is a drunk in the bushes. D Brown's having a good Sunday night. Cheers, my man. Yeah, there's definitely mint in this. Um, maybe. It may be cinnamon. Let me try ginger. I feel like it might be dry ginger. Yeah, I think, to me, it's more uh, mint and ginger. I, cinnamon, uh, man, maybe. Okay, I, I can see the fireball. Well, wait a minute. I mean, no. On the A120, I don't get that on the A120, Nate. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I can see the sweetness. I get the sweetness. Uh, I get that that candied. I get candied sweetness, but the but I get mint and ginger, and I think that spiciness is not is is ginger and not. Um, there is there is candied ginger out there. There are ginger flavored candies, and to me, the A one twenty is is more ginger than cinnamon. I can see cinnamon, but I would I would err on if I had to pick one. If I, I mean if I can't just shotgun a bunch of notes against the wall, I'm gonna say it's ginger before I'm gonna say cinnamon. But I don't think you're crazy. I just think it's uh, um, I don't think you're crazy, which is the initial thrust of this nosing. Is am I crazy or is this a bunch of cinnamon? No, you're not crazy. It's minty, it's super sweet, and it's got some sort of baking spice. To me, it's the ginger. Um, cinnamon might be underlying it, but it's pretty subtle if it's there. Let's taste it. What the hell? Nah, not my favorite. Not my favorite. Um, we got to make some room in this glassware because I'm out of glassware. So let's finish off this tiny pour method of madness. Um, 
finish off this tiny pour of Jefferson's Ocean. We'll finish off this uh, tiny pour of the Sazerac Rye. I'm just clearing out some glassware because I've got three pours where I've read on the internet baking spice as a note from reviewers who I will not name. I like that note, D Brown. Delicious. That's a good note. <laughs> oh, Nate asked if there was cinnamon on the finish of the A120. Mid palette. It finishes bitter wood, but to me, the mid palate cinnamon. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely cinnamon on the A120 in the palate, more to me than on the nose. All right, let's drink some of this water, and then we're going to do a couple of pours that have really ridiculous notes on the internet. Let's throw you. Cilantro. Oakley doakley. Now, normally I might feel compelled to be a little bit more meticulous with my, uh, oh man, you guys, you guys, look at that. Tell me that doesn't look delicious. We have enough for lunch tomorrow, too. Thank you, baby. Oh, man. <sighs> All right. That is going to make it hard to focus on this tasting, but we can do it quick. Um. <laughs> yes, a mild cheesesteak. So the whiskeys that I've gotten the note of baking spice from Buffalo Trace. This is a store pick, but it's one that's relatively in line with their standard. Teresa's Batch of Booker's. Finally, Blanton's. So, I can tell you right off the bat that Bland's is cinnamon. Bland's is a light cinnamon. Um, and that might be it. Let me find that nutmeg real quick. Maybe a little nutmeg, but mostly cinnamon on the Blanton's. Um, I think they just wanted to say it was baking spice. They didn't want to get too specific. And it is a single barrel product, so the barrels can vary. So maybe that was part of the mentality is you know there's going to be a baking spice, which one may depend on the barrel. This is the Buffalo Trace. Again, I think a lot of times baking spice is sort of a replacement for cinnamon and something else. There's a vanilla. There's kind of a cinnamon. I may actually get clove on this. No. Not clove. Could it be allspice? Yeah. So this, now this is the vine and table store pick. Um, but I definitely get allspice on the nose on that one. So that's kind of fun. And maybe just a touch of mint. Just a touch of mint. Okay. If 
Because like nutmeg and graham cracker are close. Is that right? No. Um, nutmeg graham cracker is closer to cinnamon. Um, nutmeg to me is it's like it's halfway between ginger and pepper. So I don't know if that'll be something you can wrap your brain around, but halfway between a ginger and pepper. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Steve Brown. I appreciate it, man. I'll take a look at that after this stream, my man. All right. Now let's finally do the Teresa's badge because that's one that's been confounding for me for a while. Not spearmint. Oh, that is the first example I've had all night and maybe ever of peppermint. Teresa's batch has some peppermint. Let's see if it's got any anise. No. No anise. Maybe a hint of allspice? Maybe a hint of peppermint and allspice? Definitely not nutmeg. Maybe a hint of ginger. So I'm getting peppermint and ginger. Yeah, peppermint and ginger. That's pretty unique on the nose. Um, yeah, I, I guess that would make sense why people didn't like it. Well, guys, um, I'll give you guys a couple bites of this on camera, but I'm going to pretty quickly cut away. That's everything I had intended for the night. Um, thank you guys so much for joining. Keep you know, keep your eye out for the merch. I legitimately, I legitimately think that Yolanda has helped me design some merch. Well, she has designed a lot of it. I will say um, that isn't just for people that watch this channel. I mean, if you watch this channel, you want to support me, then you can buy this and still feel like you're just wearing regular clothes that just look cool. And that was kind of my whole point with the merch. D. Brown asked if I've had the new pigskin bookers. I have not had it. I want to try it. I've heard good things. But I haven't had it yet. Before we leave tonight, please put in the chat your favorite bourbon under $50. Put in the chat your favorite bourbon under $50 before we leave because I want to know what it is. It's good. Add a little pepper to it. Yes, it can, D Brown. Trevor said a Knob Creek 15 year store pick. Nate said Old Ezra 7.
There are six people in this video. There's D Brown, 1792 full proof. Gun to my head. Good choice, my man. E.H. Taylor, single barrel. You might be cheating a little bit there. Although MSRP, you're right. All right, guys. <laughs> so is Stag Jr. Yeah, Stag Jr. is definitely cheating, Nate. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching. If you are just joining us and you want to catch up, I'm going to post the, the you know replay of this as soon as this is over. I appreciate your support so much. Look out. We got a lot of cool stuff coming in the near future. Um, reach out to me if you want me to review something, if you want to see something, if you want to talk about something. I'm always uh, you know available to talk. I'm, my ears are always open. My heart is always open. <laughs> Cheers, guys. I'm going to eat this cheesesteak. Y'all keep drinking like professionals. And uh, try out something different. Mix it up. Cheers.